Hey, welcome back, Hood News Peeps, episode 10. Episode 10. Hector's here with me. Hey, glad to be here, Grizzy. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Props to Arandas for coming out with some tamales. Ah. Another thing, Mm -hmm. we have some crazy news, is that in the last month on grizzlieshoodnews.com, over 250,000 people have visited the website. Brand new website. Thank you, 250,000 people to the website. Whenever uh, Facebook crashes out again, you know where to go. (laughs) That's right. We got a, a great show ahead of you. So what is it? Get your, get your snacks. Yeah, go get your snacks. Get go your get tamales. the takis, the hot chips, the tamales from Arandas, the, the pan dulce. Go get it, friends. Go get your caufe. And we'll be right back. All right, so every year we do the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And last week kind of highlighted some of the things that were happening at, at Cookoff, but they had this uh, mounted patrol that was, go- I guess, went out this past week. Oh, yeah, Houston's Police Department Mounted Patrol Division. Shout out to them. You know, they also ride around in the hood. Like, it's mm-hmm. not just for rodeo. Like, these guys are out there during events. I mean, they cover a lot. You know, like, I even saw them at a riot in downtown one right. time. But, but uh, yeah, these guys and gals are, like, everything. It's such a beautiful, amazing presence at the Livestock Show and Rodeo. No, it's, and it's beautiful horses, too, as well. Yeah. I know the Chiquitas were loving the, the stuff mm-hmm. they were seeing, too, as well. But <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our Chiquitas. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. But, no, they came out in full force. And those the, the Mountain Patrol, we forget that there is a Mountain Patrol yeah. here in Houston. Yeah. But they Very come much. out, whether it's a, if it's a, a crowd control but you know they're out on the horseback and they're trying to keep the peace but they come out and came out with show, full force there yeah very royal and grandiose man mm-hmm. look at these images of these cow- and we even got chief finner on a horse what shout out to uh hpd's uh chief finner in the house yeah look at everybody looking good man uh, that's quite a bit of horses that show up you yeah. know uh you know that's and, and and they're at the rodeo too as well and in beautiful horses beautiful animals out there Diana Rios on Facebook says it's for the Chiquitas. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I told her I'm glad you said that. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Proud of our HPD Mounted Patrol. Thanks for everything you do, HPD and Houston Police Department. Yeah, nobody does Houston's Rodeo Grand Entry better than the Houston Police Department's Mounted Patrol Division. Right. All right, Hector, it's not a secret. This is historical throughout the you know time frame of the hood news. Like we got Jenga masters, and what is that you ask? Oh man, this these, is a, these, uh, a, a, what a are these pile called? of pallets. Pile uh, piles and piles of pallets. <laughs> I'm not talking about one or two pallets in the back of a truck. You know that's scary enough because yeah. you don't know if this stuff's gonna fly off. But we got Django masters out here. Look at these guys. Uh, could you imagine uh, riding and driving behind this thing? Oh no, <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna pull over to the side, ride slow, yeah, and it, let it, them go. And if you notice, the people are he's actually in the fast lane. It's not like he's in the slow lane. No, not at all. <laughs> like this, this dude is thugging it out. No, Look, I he mean goes. he's swinging. He's and banging. He's yes, he's swinging and banging with a bunch of pallets mm-hmm. stacked high. And, you know, he knows his clearance. So he's better than a lot of these truck drivers that yeah. don't know their clearance, you know. And, yeah, it's just crazy, man. A hood news peep, uh, Charlize, she sent this in. And she was like, Grizzy, do your thing. I said, I got gotcha. you. Uh, he, he's going a good about yeah. 70 miles an hour right there. He's I going believe, speed of traffic. I believe this was somewhere off of 290. I'm not mm-hmm. really sure where they were, you know, destined or bound to go. But, yeah, look at him. He's going. <laughs> he's making sure he's not going for two trips. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's I mean, could you imagine this being driving behind that? I, I'm going to I'm going to step, you know, as far as I'm going to be as far back as possible knowing how much mm-hmm. th- how many things fall off vehicles here yeah, in Houston. Yeah, we trying to play around with that. Whether it's bulls, yeah. it's now pa- you know, pallets, people drive pallets. The pallet kings. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we got somebody uh Riley. She says if I ain't making two separate trips, was a person. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tessa says, "Final destination seven one three. Ooh, yeah, that one's a good one. <laughs> oh man, that, that's a scary. That's a scary thought. You know, just saying. You know, just being behind that. But thank God, he looks like he strapped it in pretty well. Uh, and we didn't hear any, any other incidents. Yeah, from we didn't hear nothing. Mm. But be, be safe out there. Yeah. Don't don't go out there. You know, put everybody else in danger because we just had some inc- incident this. Yeah, I, think, yesterday. I included a picture also of a mattress, a video. I mean, a mattress flew out, flew off a truck on the Fred somebody, Hartman Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't on the Fred Hartman Bridge. Shout out to our Baytown peeps, mm-hmm. all the people out that way. Uh, the the mattress flew off. A Camaro struck it, and it like just created a sequence of events. We had multiple car crash 
right off the Fred Hartman bridge. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm saying. You're not strapping it in correctly. And, mm -hmm. and those mattresses, and whether it's a pallet or mattress, you know, oh, you yeah. got to make sure the wind, if it's 30 yeah. miles an hour, easy to top it. Top Easily could have caught fire because I had somebody in my family run over a mattress. And <laughs> that happened to, they, they were on, it was a slab Sunday, a Caprice, I think they were riding around mm -hmm. with, an old school big body. And man, that thing went up in flames because they ran over a mattress. <laughs> and it was a baby crib mattress. And those those mattresses could be, could, could be as big as a Caprice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Hector, we've got something, you know, game rooms are a little, you know, yeah. we, we see, you know, game room, uh, what do you call it, when, when they come in and, mm -hmm. and take them over, like raids and right. stuff. We'll see the fire marshals, the precinct one, constable deputies are out there. In this case, uh, a game room reached out to us and mm -hmm. they want to be kept anonymous, but somebody broke into their machine and, and, and everybody, he's got lookouts. He's got the buddy that knew how to unscrew everything. Mm -hmm. Then you got the one with the, you know, with the audacity to come get the money and all of this. We do have his face also. This is one of those uh, hood news, uh, be on the lookout types for our, all our game rooms. We want to keep the people safe at the end yeah. of the day. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's It raises the question, should uh, gambling be legalized? legalized right. yeah. I mean, they're going to find a way to do it anyways yeah. here in Houston mm -hmm. or Texas. But, you know, thank God none, none of my tigas were there <laughs> at the yeah. game rooms there Man, <laughs> playing, playing those slot machines. Mm -hmm. But, no, you know, these it's, it's kind of just vulnerable, right? So they're yeah. sitting out there. You were at a raid just a couple of weeks ago or something Oh, yeah, happened, right? yeah, yeah, right off of uh, 59 and Tidwell area. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, 59 Tidwell area, close to Dodson. There was one also. And then we've even shown one where there was a couple, and the guy breaks into it using a Ryobi. Oh. He pulled it out of his pants and started sawing. Like, where was this Ryobi on his person? It's like magician stuff. Yeah. So, where's security in all of this? Uh, well, I, I'm gonna go ahead and make the right. assumption that this is inside a gas station. Okay. So there's probably somebody behind bulletproof glass. Right. So that kind of worked, uh, you know, to their advantage. Yeah, it's so surprising that uh, these these thieves and how brazen they are. Yeah. Um, you know, coming into these uh, these shops and exactly. and, and these uh, you know, and and also. You kind of put yourself out there, too, in, in yeah. a situation where there's money being exchanged. We exactly. talk about that, especially if it's late at night. If mm -hmm. you're out there putting money into a machine, people know you're coming in with cash. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a payday. And, and who can they really report it to? Nobody. <laughs> right. All right, Grizzly. So we just saw the the whole pallet action, the Jenga action right there on 290, I yeah. believe. But, you know, there's been times where I've seen where those things will fall off the back of a truck and yeah. hit and slam into somebody. And you know what? If our viewers and followers find themselves in a situation where they're victims of a car wreck or some type of injury that result that's that comes from somebody's lack of uh, responsibility, make sure you call the Hollingsworth Law Firm. That's Steve Hollingsworth and his team at the Hollingsworth Law Firm. They will fight for you. They will get the justice that you deserve. And guess what, Grizzy? They don't have to pay until they, they win. win. That's right. Uh, it's the Hollingsworth Law Firm, proud sponsors of Grizzly's Hood News. All right, so if you're born and raised in here in H-Town, you know how dirty our waterways could be. And, you know, mm -hmm. being raised right there in Northside, I used to go right there on the bayou, right there on 59 and, and uh, what was it, right next to Fiesta? What's that? Yeah, the Hall's yeah. Bayou. Hall's Bayou. My grandfather used to take me fishing down oh, there yeah, when I was that's a little a nice kid. One. We wouldn't eat the fish, but we'd go fishing yeah. for fun. <laughs> but, we, you know, our bayous can get really dirty. People throw in trash in there. But there is now an organization that comes out and they clean up the trash there in the waterways. So being that we're in Bayou City, we've got this amazing young man by the name of David Jared Urias. Follow him, you guys. He does Bayou cleanup mm -hmm. every first Sunday of every month. And we do have pictures here. I've joined them a couple of times already. It's really cool, like, just to see people kayaks. Yeah. What you get out of this is you can ride the kayaks for free mm -hmm. because they do offer touring service other days. But uh, they, they take advantage to, to clean the bayou. You get to ride with your kids. It's a good way to give back to Mother Nature. Yeah, and that's a pretty cool experience, uh -huh. you know, reading out, you know, being out in the kayak and being yeah. out there and cleaning up. I'm pretty sure they find all kinds of things, right? Yes. they. I mean, one time they that found the, the top of a, a washing machine. <laughs> oh my god lots of shoes socks it makes me wonder like it's even kind of creepy there's that creepy mm -hmm. factor what if somebody gets pulled out of the water you yeah know? like a person like you know it's just we never know and they're always finding yes. things there in buffalo yes. bayou and downtown Buffalo bayou holds mm -hmm. a lot of secrets yeah whether it's somebody's shenanigans uh you know the effish the foolishness and effery mm -hmm. or or side chick you know action out there too <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't matter. Like the 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 bayou keeps a lot of secrets, but they do get unearthed anytime it rains. Yeah. Things start surfacing. So they definitely this group of people, and this is ran by. Let me let me give the the shout out where it's due. Buffalo Bayou Kayak Tours. Follow them as well on Facebook. Our friend David is out there, and he gives tours during the week. Mm-hmm. But this is something that he wants to do to give back to the community. And it's the first Sunday of every month. Yep. That's first very Sunday. very very neat uh, experience. Yeah, around noon time, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And you know our our, our waterways, the the bayouways are, are filled with wildlife. People don't mm-hmm. realize that that we have fish. Yeah, fish. And we've had manatees. I'm not sure you remember that. Years, really? many years back, manatees have swam up the bayou really? uh, into here, right here in downtown. It made okay. national news where the manatee wow. actually swam up the port of Houston wow. into our downtown waterways. That's amazing. Um, yeah. But you know, as dirty as it could be, it's surprising mm-hmm. that how many how much wildlife there is. There's alligators. There's alligator yeah, gars. Yeah. Uh, but it's really interesting to see how much wildlife is there. But this is a great experience. If you and your family want to get involved in something and help in the community and clean up Houston and help keep Houston clean, mm-hmm. uh, get involved with Buffalo Bayou Kayak Tours. Uh, Grizzly's Hood News and Grizzly, she's always sharing their posts there mm-hmm. on Facebook. So make sure you hit a, hit a follow uh, and get involved in the community. Yeah, I've seen lots of Boy Scouts, dads, uh, little girls with their moms. Like It's just nice to see parents teaching their kids mm-hmm. you know, to give back to the community. It's a great service to the Buffalo Bayou. It's it's a beautiful place. I mean, when you're looking at it, not only we want to go get selfies, but we you know we want to keep it nice. We don't want all that trash in the background on those selfies. Yeah, we don't want any yeah. more washing machines yeah. uh, there in the bayou floating. I'm For pretty real. sure they can find cars too. Oh yeah, just like up in all there. the hood bayous keep them. <laughs> Man, I went like even like Trinity River. Uh-huh. I was told that they had like seven cars in the water at yeah. the time. So I was like, what? There's that bayou in the East End. I think I think it's Greens Bayou right there yeah. on I-10. They're always yeah. finding cars oh, in, that, yeah. in that bayou, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, Hector and our Hood News peeps at home, man, please say prayers for Carlos Fernandez. This is a little boy that lived on in the Cloverleaf area of uh, east side of Houston. East side peeps, where are you guys at? So Sunday, you heard the news also, right? Yeah, like, a young child that was, you know, mm-hmm. just was murdered in the middle of the night. Yep. Uh, I, I think he was looking out the window. Yeah, something. somebody was uh, was trying to gain a- access into the apartment through the blinds and he was on the other side of the blinds carlos being the son Mm -hmm. of a single mother he was very thoughtful kid he was like the man of the house and this little boy got up from his bed where he was sleeping with his two younger sisters he got up went to the blinds to go see what was going on and that's when he got shot at twice one of the the bullets hit his elbow went into his stomach and and whoever did this fled the scene Mom heard the, the the shots fired. She went to go check on her son, and and she you know had to tend to him. Called nine one one. Meanwhile, whoever did this, which is somebody identified by the way, it, it's a it's a they they were able to get away from the scene right. and they fled. Uh, the cops were called. The EMS arrived, but it was already too late. Carlos died at the scene. Yeah, and this is a, a you know a very handsome, beautiful twelve year old yes. boy, and you know this yeah. this strikes this strikes me close to home. I'm I'm on the east side too yeah, as well, yeah. mm-hmm. but you know this uh, this young man, you know he's he's also the oldest kid, oldest right? Yes, he's the the son of a single mom, the oldest. So he was like the protector. He was always aware of of how of the struggles yeah. for his mom. Like he was he was aware. Like they try to take him on little shopping sprees, and he was always aware of how much things cost. He was very thoughtful. He would keep the like the younger siblings and the, the younger cousins. Anytime the family would get together, he would keep the kids entertained. Like he was a helper, very quiet, very quiet, sweet boy. Like mm-hmm. that. W- that's how we can kind of like just sum it up. Just an overall, he was the little man of the house. Yeah. And I, I wonder, like this little boy, like he died in his final moments, being a hero. You yeah. know, because this could have been worse. Right. If this man would have came in to do this and and Hector I'm about to reveal something right now mm-hmm. a few days before this individual had went into the house into the home where, where Carlos stayed with his mom and his his sisters there were other women and children in in the in the home and somebody came in there making threats with a gun with a gun that belonged to mom that he had stolen. So this is an individual known to the family. Um, I, for reasons, you know, we're trying to protect the investigation right. and whatnot. We can't put out too much info. But what we can say is that mom asked for help. The cops yeah. were called and and uh, some deputies came out. 
Unfortunately, for some reason or another, this person was not arrested or taken into custody, despite, you know, how, how many people were in the home that saw this. I'm not really sure what happened, but, but here we are a few days later and little Carlos is deceased. You know, we talked about earlier, you know, before we recorded this program, you know, how the news cycle every week now for the last couple of weeks has been something very traumatic. And that's, oh, issues. yeah. And I, we were hoping that this kind of calms down a bit, but this is another traumatic situation that's uh, unfolding. Yes, involving uh, a child. Yeah. This is another child crime. Yeah. And it's, and it's a, and the fact that the mother went out on Friday night or, you know, she called for help. Yeah. And help, she was thinking help would arrive. But I guess that individual came back a few nights yeah, later. Yeah. Like th there was an opportunity for this guy to be put behind bars. And, as and of the, the ball was dropped. And as of right now, the recording, the guy still has not been caught. No. And, and there are some grainy images going around of a vehicle, of a suspect vehicle. He's not been identified. They do say that they are saying now that they have somebody identified, but they're not releasing the name. And, and I feel like it's a danger to the public because, you know, this person is unhinged with with a stolen weapon he's not allowed to he's got priors right this person is not allowed to have a weapon on him he's got a felony background so so this is a felon in possession of a firearm and it's just very scary for the community uh, that he's not been identified publicly and i understand maybe for the reasons that they need to arrest him but also i feel like there's that there's that you know like balance that we need to find right to let people know hey be careful because this guy's on the loose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this guy's just out and about. As, as of the, this recording, he is still on the loose. Yeah. So um, hopefully by the time this program airs, he's been caught and yeah. found and taken off the streets I away from so. any yeah. harming from anybody else. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we need to get justice for this uh, for Carlos mm -hmm. uh, and his family. Most Carlos, definitely. who was standing up for his family, who was doing the right thing. Uh, innocent young little boy yes. who was just trying to look out for his family you know, look out the window and then find himself in danger. Yeah. Uh, let's get this guy off the streets. Let's hope the, the sheriff's department, let's hope the police department, let they, they find justice and they get the justice swiftly and uh, get this guy off the streets. Um, you know, is there anything else that you, I know you're going to uh, meet with A vigil later. was yeah. held yesterday mm -hmm. and I am in communication with this family. Uh, the news, we had a news reporter from another station interview a neighbor and put the neighbor's face out there. And he gave a bunch of miscommunication and um, misinformation. Let me clear that up. Yeah. Misinformation and, and, and possibly endangering the neighbor too. It's just, we get to see some of the recklessness, you know, behind the scenes yeah. sector. Sometimes the, the, the race for, for media to try to get the story endangers people too it does. like it's just scary you know grizzly and I, I one thing i would tell you one of the many things i would tell you you know that i give you a lot of credit for is that you know coming from myself working with corporate media and mm -hmm. then coming to work with you mm -hmm. um and work alongside you i've seen where you're very cautious about oh, what you report yeah. every and, you know step. that's that's honor to you and credit Thank to you. you you know and I, I see i've seen i've been in situations where corporate media and other media outlets will be out there first to blast like you said first to get the story out yeah and get out and misconstrue mm -hmm. uh information and, and and that's not even factual yeah. and it almost hurts the investigations at points yeah it um, really does right and then in, in your case i've seen if you're watching this um you know i've seen where grizzly she's very cautious so she makes sure she gets the facts straight she gets her story straight and this is what real news is this is what yeah, this you. is this what we talk about you know if it's real news it's hood news mm -hmm. and this is our heart here um you know and props to you for everything and thank, and, you, and thank you for keeping the getting the facts right and straight because yeah. these people here deserve it yeah it's carlos a, deserves it yeah it's a huge disservice to tell the story and not tell it correctly for carlos for his family like they should be able to lean on the community mm -hmm. right now they're shying away from everyone when that shouldn't be the case they should be able to count on us but if we're being given wrong information or incorrect or dangerous information I mean, that's the disservice to the entire community. Absolutely. And, you know, mm -hmm. these people, they, they need, they're looking for justice. And this yes. is why people come to the to the hood news for that help and the support. You know, don't don't flog, you know, line up the, the messenger with, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. don't Google Grizzly, them. right? Yeah. Don't <laughs> Grizzly as Google. But, you know, in, in the midst of all the messages, there are some real people yeah. who are really hurting and through certain real situations. Yes. Um, yes. But let's let's get this guy off the streets. Let's pray for the police department. Let's pray for the uh, the family, uh, Carlos's family, that, you know, that there's peace in that home and also some healing done. So I know they're hurting right now. And mm -hmm. I, I could not imagine the hurt and the void uh, that they're feeling right now. Grizzly. Yeah, they need to be able to grieve without being terrified. Yeah. You know, that's one thing. We can at least try to help with getting that guy off the streets. And I'm hoping as soon as possible that this information or maybe an update with an arrest, that will be mm -hmm. fantastic if they can get this guy off the streets because he's dangerous and he's armed. 
Yes, and I, by the time this program airs, or hopefully in the next couple of days, maybe by today, we can mm -hmm. find and have an update. For sure. So, Grizzy, you know, uh, this, this will wrap up episode number 10. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. You know, I was on YouTube, by the way. Make sure you guys follow us on YouTube. If you don't have CW39, uh, go to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, and you will watch it stream live every Saturday. But I was watching the comments, Grizzy, and one person, I think, from out of state was saying, man, you guys live in a war zone. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, but, you know, however, I would got to give my props to H-Town because – yeah. H Town produces this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look we out for together, each other. Man. We come it's together, man. It's a war zone. Yeah. But we got a lot of soldiers. Yeah, we do, and, 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 and we know, look out for each together. other. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we got the spirit of H Town. We, we like, we can't help our, our surroundings. We can't help what other people do. But if we unite together and and for the greater cause, man, we all look out for each other. I mean, that's all. That's all we can really do. And that's what Grizzly's Hood News is all about. Mm -hmm. We're a uniter, not a divider. Yeah. And thanks for everybody for following us and being supportive of Grizzly's Hood yes. News. She does this. This is what she does for a living. This is what she does on her own. Thank you guys for following. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on grizzyshoodnews.com. Also, great thank, big thanks for all of our sponsors, Hollingsworth Law Firm. Yes. We you, also man. got Arandas, yeah. uh, the taqueria and the bakery. Yeah. Thanks for the, the tamales and the tapan. And then also we have a new sponsor. That's Corey Roth Law Firm, wow. Criminal Defense. We're so, uh, so we're excited about that. So thank you guys for all your support and following Grizzly's Hood News. And until then, if it's real news. It's hood news.